The word of Yahweh Elohim is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkano, to the highest, the only righteous Lord of a God who revealed himself so the sinful mankind can understand. Without his Son being sent for us, we could have perished in our own lives. But in his eternity past of plan, being gracious for us, chosen to be holy and blameless, after believing in the Lord of our God to follow the same paths of holy and blameless and to be agnacatas, unreproachable. Only by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the principle being lying down in 1 John 2, 27. Without the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, either the ministry of Him, wherewith the sealing and the earnest deposit, into the already baptized of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, into the royal family of Lord of a God. To such great Lord of a God, He has designed us to be trichotomous in this nature, not to be dead in your sins by dichotomous, recognizing and remembering that we are dust, yet He forgives us when we truly repent with the true repentance. To such great Lord our God be the glory on His wonderful name, the wonderful name of His acts, the wonderful name of His assurance that He has spoken and we walk by faith and we believe and we receive it. To such great Lord our God be the glory to the highest and peace be to be the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone. Not a point of debate from their roguish mind, from their avant thoughts. A Bible doctrine is not a debate for them. Bible doctrine is the life. Every word that Christ our Lord our God revealed for us on this earth belongs to us and that's a life for us. It's a way of life that we need to walk as heavenly citizens. A way of life where Apostle Paul constantly proclaims in 1 Corinthians 4.1. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, in Romans chapter 16, verse 17, and Philippians chapter 3 and following to tell those who don't follow this rule, those who have forgot the rule of heavenly citizenship. He tells for us after believing in Christ, the life for you is a heavenly citizen on this earth. This great privilege which you have today in the church age in the completed canon of scripture to realize and to understand the greatest work of Lord God the Holy Spirit ever made in your life when you believe in Christ activating and creating your human spirit in you to understand the truth of the mind of Christ transforming you to become or renovating you to become or metamorphomai for you to become from your whole sin nature to the person of let get the Holy Spirit new nature being put on in the terms of Endikaiosune Kaihosietis Thessalatia. To such great Lord our God be the glory at every breath of our life. We have been chosen to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not only just to get Him glory, but to be ruling as kings on this earth. The Nagid. When David anoints and makes the people to realize, not, not, not anoint, but makes his son Solomon to reign over a king in 2 Kings 1.35. The same thing what every believer is today in Christ. The Hebrew word Nagid, which has been mentioned in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 6. The excellent things being translated as Nagid. The word of the Lord our God tells to us, Christ our Lord, Messiah has been counted as Nagid, as King in Daniel 9.25. And do you know what you are today? 
You are a Nagi, it says Christ our Lord our God in John 18, 37 and 38, that he was being born to be a king to witness the truth. So that when you can realize to the fact of Proverbs chapter 8, which is the wisdom discourse for every sinful mankind on this earth, though after believing in Christ, being not in the fellowship of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit of mentoring ministry, to control him, to learn the word, and to understand the word, and to walk a life of the heavenly citizen on this earth in the terms of the word of the Lord of God. If they don't wake up, Never they will realize Revelation 1 6, which tells Lord our God designed them to be kings and priests. And the Hebrew word Nagid meant to say for us in each and every field of your calling, it is a top position for you, a top position of leadership. The great purpose for us on this earth, where which we have been given, is to be as king witnessing the throne. And that's why every believer has been kept alive to witness as a truth like king on this church age far as the people go along to debate to think that it is a doubly copied that's what they thought and the sad part what we look today in the terms of kleptes lustes misthotes thupas canapes thiflos and show us warranted minded pastors who haven't truly understood the right purpose of the word of the Lord of God in this church age because of their fitan logia. Whenever we look upon such words, dear brethren, it pierces our heart where the church age ought to be, where every believer in Christ being designed to be king as Nagid in Christ. To witness his truth because of paralogizomai and fitanlogia they have been ending up certainly in misfortunes but not able to honor Lord's word above his name the nagate things which Lord of God has revealed for us in the mind of Christ it is for every believer in Christ in this church age. So that the palate of the mouth of him, says Proverbs 8, 7, should speak truth. A myth, which is a stable character, continual character, faithful character. When a person has been given the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church, to become the pastor teacher, his Ahmed character will be stabilized every day by learning the word, by teaching the word. And he will replace Fithan Logia with Exegiomai, John 1.18. And in order to realize that Fithan Logia, he will wake up. Though it may look pleasing to the people, but it's deceptive. The one who doesn't have this bona fide gift will certainly fail to inculcate this truth to the people of the congregation of the Lord of a God wherewith we assemble Kahal, what we have read yesterday. The pure demands of the mind of Christ in the terms of Acribos, constantly what the word of the Lord of a God demands so that the people can end up in debates telling that the word of the Lord of a God is not the word of the Lord of a God itself. The Lord became the word. Only one alphabet yell and you represent it with W that becomes the word apart from the Lord. Our Lord who dwelt in Theophanes came along in Christophanes and later on became himself flesh. After the flesh again became the written word which is nothing but the living word. Not a point to debate as the people think it's a point of debate. It's the way of life without the mind of Christ there is no life for you on this earth. And we come to the section of pastor teachers wherewith our Lord of God is so specific in telling to us in the words of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 6, My utterance, the Dawar in the Hebrew, D-H-A-V-A-R. The word Dawar has been replaced by Dever, D-H-E-V-E-R today in today's Christendom by the so-called Fithan Logias. Who are Fithan Logias? 
who show to you the persuasive speech with their specious discourse but never they will tell to you the reality what is that reality and where it has been found the reality has been found in the original languages of the scriptures of proper isagogics, categories and exegesis. The reality has been found in the right dispensing technique of dispensations. The reality has to be thought with the intense hermetical principle of the word wherewith every believer have to wake up to realize it is word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. In fact, when indeed the so-called pastors, they did not even wait upon the faithfulness of the Lord our God to provide them a virgin wife. And they think they are pastors because they got married. A woman who is already a wolf. When they don't realize that a pastor, as in the past dispensation which has been told, a Levite should marry only a virgin. And today's Christendom pastors have forgot the marrying with whom they marry whether she is a virgin or not. So it is they have forgot the virginity towards the word of the Lord our God and they just enter into the pulpit not realizing that they have to speak the truth in the original isagogical, categorical and exegetical method word upon word, line upon line and teach them exegiomai and not phiton logia. And that's what we are able to find in today's Christendom, the pastors who lost the virginity of the word of the Lord our God either in their lives they marry to a woman who is a prostitute who has not kept and guarded her chastity to her one husband, right husband who have to be likewise they think entering into the pulpits they can go and preach whatever they mind in the terms of the fitan logia with the oratory speech and with the speech of which they replace to teach the word of the lord our god in the proper exegesis of that word they replace with the courts of the famous men of this earth the commentators are the great scholars are the great men like Plato, Aristotle, Spinoz, and the one who has been there, like uh, the, the, the one Socrates. They want to court their lives. They want to tell a German scholar has said such and such, a German believer has said such and such, but they don't want to court what the word of the Lord of God tells. No doubt it may be an inspiration to others, but the right information and the right in inspiration has been found in the original languages of the scriptures, dear brother. How long you want to go with your fitan logia? It is pleasing to the eyes of the minds of this man, but it's certainly deceptive. What the word of the Lord of God tells for us long back in Proverbs 8, 6, you as a believer in Christ is going to teach us the nagged things. He writes the same thing, in, same things in Revelation 1, 6 and 7 to tell you are being made to be kings and priests in Christ. And you are a nagid. Why? Because you have the utterance, the dawar of the word of the Lord of God and you have made the dawar to be calling as the things pertaining to be as such the Lord or thus said the Lord, the unique utterance of the Bible. And you replace it with what you know. You replace it with your own devil. D H E B E R, and that is nothing but destruction, punishment by the Lord of a God for your death. Why today many people are not able to understand that even Dewar came along from Dawar. D H E V E R originates from the word Dawar when we are not in the right work of the Christ of the Lord of a God with proper utterance to speak the truth. By the proper Rima declarations of his word, ultimately you will end up in the punishment of the Lord of a God by your death. A death like Uzziah or Perez Uzziah. That's what we are able to look today. Paralagid Zomai, miscalculation of the truth. Thinking that the word of the Lord can go for debate. What do you think the word is? It is nothing but law. And many people don't even understand the purpose of speaking in the palate of their mouth this great truth, emeth character of them. So where do they end up? <laughs> Marrying already a prostitute, like the way how they marry, not even realizing that a priest should marry only a virgin. For whom do they marry? They marry a prostitute. I refer to the prostitution of the translations of this Bible, not having the virginity in the original languages of the scriptures. A pastor teacher should marry a chaste virgin. And by that I refer to the infallible and inerrant word of the Lord of God from the original languages of the scriptures, so that every believer should wake up to the nagged duty of the Lord, like a king's duty on this earth. 
rather than being persuasing yourself in the Vithanlogiya of this time. Since the Morologia, Matalogia are entering into the pulpit, certainly their discourse will be Fitanlogia. They forgot the right discourse in the original languages of the scriptures. Therefore, they replace for their courts commentaries. They replace for their courts the great Greek scholars. In the silent period of the gap, when we read from BC 450 till to the point of the birth of the Lord of our God, the silent period where we look, now for the communication after my messenger Malachi, where even he writes in Malachi 1, 12 and 13 and 14. <laughs> Woe unto that man who gives the defiled thing, the corrupted thing, and withholds back the right thing to the Lord of our God. Do you not know the name of the Lord of our God is dreadful among the nations? Do you not know the creation of Kainiketesis in the church age is so powerful that the world will never realize it? If you go corrupting the things of the mind of Christ and replace it with the silly Fithanlogia terms. Does not you read from the last messenger Malachi when he writes? You have a good one, you have a male one in your, in your flock. And you give corrupt one to the Lord, knowing not the Lord's name is absolutely dreadful among the nations, terrible among the nations, and you have been representing it with the blasphemy of your words. And in today's Christendom as well, the pulpits are replacing the Lord's word with blasphemy. The blasphemy of human viewpoint, the blasphemy of the failure on their terms to rightly divide the word of the Lord of God. The blasphemy of their faithful work as a bona fide gifted pastor teacher in teaching the truth. Therefore, where do they end up? <laughs> they end up in Fithan Logia. They end up becoming Dever, D H E V E R, not Dawar, D H A V A R. They don't become the voice of the Lord of God in the proper Rima declarations of this truth. Do you, not read, do you not read the discourse in John 15, 7, which tells, When you want to abide with me, it has to be through the words that I spoke, that my words should abide in you. And the, what are the words? The word is Rima, Rima, Rima. Colossians 4, 6, do you not know? Season with salt. What are the words? The words is Rima. Who has to declare it? It's not the Loga, it's Rima. The bona fide gifted pastor teacher has to do that work. Who, right, and how he has to do? Like a king. And every believer has been represented as a king in Christ to do that very accurately, very specifically. The nagi duty of every believer in Christ. Why will not they represent by corrupting the things in their minds? Have they really have the honesty of their life when they're doing Lord's work to tell, yes, they're doing perfectly the Lord's duty. If they're doing perfectly, then they should marry a virgin and I refer virgin to the original languages of the scriptures. In fact, even physically, as well as in their soulishly, as well as in their spiritually, to be occupied only with the virgin who is a chaste one to the Lord. And that's what our Lord, our God has designed for us. To cherish and nourish in the truth. A right man and a right woman. The truth being a right man and the grace being the right woman both cherish. Righteousness, a right man and the peace, a right woman both cherish. Not the way how you inculcate yourself in your mind to teach. By not quoting the right word of the Lord of our God, by not giving the right things, but being corrupting those things and telling that you can have a great mind to tell that you are having the things pertaining to quote some commentators, some missionaries, some evangelists. And forget the right infallible and ignorant word of the Lord of our God, which is so powerful and so alive. Where do you want to go for your persuasive speech, specious discourse? Do you think Lord of our God is pleased by your corruptible things? Having corruption in your mind, you go along to preach to the Lord of our God and you tell, Yes, Lord, this is the only offering I can give, which is blind, which is having no ear properly, which is not being able to be as an offering to the Lord of our God. And you say you're doing Lord's work. The fair problem with us, they get compromised with everything in their lives. Even the believers get compromised. But believers have been called to be as kings. 
they are never called to be as the servants they are servants to the lord of our god but to the world they are kings in the kingship they need to witness the truth nothing but the truth what the word says what are the demands of the mind of christ that he will execute in his ameth character of christ he is a king to the lord of a god and he has been appointed as a king and by that i refer to every believer ransom for many not just one or two how great would be the people to realize christ our lord of a god being born kept in a manger swaddled in the swaddled clothes so that you can understand the purpose of being born as a baby and why he was not been made like the first adam in his reasoning he was been placed in the angelic conflict to witness the truth for the lord by obeying him but right from a baby the childhood to fulfill the law on the eighth day to be circumcised and growing up in knowledge and in truth says Luke chapter 2 furthermore he went along to discourse to tell for us for our stupid mind senses right from the day of his birth right from the day of his circumcision day right from the day of his growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine he is teaching to us our moron minds by the age of 33 you need to finish your work on this earth and what does he show for us he's showing us as a pattern dear brethren a pattern how we need to wear up our children a pattern how we need to do lord's will a pattern how we need to work for lord's glory a pattern wherewith you should understand it is not my will the lord but thy will i have been born only to do thy will the lord do you know how the psychology of these people are looking upon their children they will say these are the genes of the great grandfather or their father or a mother she is looking like that he's looking like that and she will be behaving like that and they want to look what went wrong among the genes and ultimately they don't even make that man to live his own life or to live her own life they tell they want to pass down the alibis to say because of such and such it happened because of such and such because if they were a one in the hereditary terms therefore it has become like this to her or to her or to to that man And do you know what the discourse is all about in that psychological process? They never make that man or woman to realize that they have their life. And in Christ, when they believe in my Lord, they have a unique life. A unique life to tell, not my will, O Lord, but thy will. And how do they come to know thy will of the word of the Lord of a God? Only when they come in the daily perception, daily waiting in the mind of Christ. Proverbs 8, 34, day by day, yesterday, today, tomorrow, yesterday, today, tomorrow, renovating the standards of your mind. So that you can realize you are not of this earth. Therefore, Christ our Lord our God will be, and he has told constantly for us to realize, it is not my will, O Lord, but thy will. Therefore, every believer should wake up to be being born as a witnesses for the truth even if you have the progeny of the Lord of our God where Christ says in Malachi chapter 3 to tell the holy seed of God for his purpose you shall train them up from the day number one and since we are not under the law making the children to understand the circumcision of their heart mind and soul and ears that from the day of from the from the day of their birth till to the point of one or two years when they can reach the maturity of the standards of going to Sunday school, the parents have to train them up. From age number two till to the age of fourteen, they need to be trained up very specifically. From age number fourteen till to the age of twenty, they should kneel down and represent as king to write down the Bible at least once in their entire life. And from age number twenty till to the age number of twenty-five or thirty, it should be represented in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic of the interlinear. And from age number thirty to thirty-three, they should be representing the third time in the original languages what they should write. And after the age of thirty-three, it is no longer their life because now already they have been prepared for a life of truth. And after the age of 33, what do they do? They go to live a life of Christ, dear brethren. For that reason, our Lord, our God ended up his work at the age of 33 to prove, I have finished my fight. And therefore, he says, Tetelestai. But we human beings, not being born in the spirit, had given an option for you to be born in the spirit by faith alone in Christ alone not by your works constantly called for you without the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit you cannot even call my Lord as Lord take it granted 
because of the sealing ministry of light get the holy spirit you have been yet though you sin and grievance quelch to the indwelling mentoring ministry of light get the holy spirit you have been graced out at least today or tomorrow you will come to the right work in the lord today or tomorrow when you wake up you will realize your right witnessing in christ today or tomorrow i will come to the point of understanding why i have been kept alive on this earth so that you can perform the duty of nugget when christ our lord our god himself is a king says daniel 9 25 as messiah being translated then how much more work we have been representing him over here to be his kings and priests a believing priest if you are a believing priest, every breath you need to be controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound in the powers of your priesthood through 1 John 1 9. Because we have been given the greatest exegeomai process. Where with Christ our Lord our God says in John 1 18, without exegeomai, it's no way possible for you to understand his calling. Without exegeomai, you will not understand what is the truth. Therefore, what you do without exegiomai, you represent the fifth logia. What a sad part it is. The result is fifth logia because of paralegizomai, misrepresentation, misreconning, miscalculation. What is that miscalculation? First of all, failing to believe that you are a saint. Failing to believe that you have been saved at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. It doesn't require any works or baptisms for you to be saved. There itself you are going in a miscalculation. And not able to realize that we have been in the completed care of scripture. And we are in this great unique dispensation of the church age of grace. The ministry of Latgar, the Holy Spirit has a dispensation for us. The ministry of righteousness, the ministry of the church, the ministry of the grace. There also you miscalculate and you combine the Israel with the church. And however, not coming in homo thumadan, with one mind, with one mouth, with one passion, so that they can understand, with one mouth they can absolutely teach the word of the Lord of God. The denominations crack out. The denominations say we shall do this and we shall form such and such terms and we shall follow our our looking our own alternatives again that follows a cult the primary reason why they don't come to worship my lord my rock my god my salvation with one mind with one passion with one accord the breaking ministry of lord get the holy spirit in their lives the word is the truth it's the same from the beginning and it will be the same even though the heaven and the earth perish out as the word says and we have the new heavens and the new earth but it is in the mind of man it has to tell that design is wrong in his mind. The corruption is in his process. The corruption is in the failure of him to daily learn the word of the Lord of God and to teach properly with the right terms of exegomai. But the Bible doesn't go wrong. The translations have led to wrong and they think it's wrong when they read to go to debates. But the Bible is perfectly all right. The reasons why they go like that because of the terms of rejecting the truth in the original languages of daily growing up word upon word line upon line precept upon precept above all why they go wrong because they have been beguiled they have been misreconned and they have been not found being concealed in Christ and that word conceal which has been hidden and kept apart for kept secret for us says Colossians 2 3 where it has been concealed and kept they have been kept in Christ and for where the treasures are being deposited where it is in Christ and he is going to reveal that things to those who are his prophets says Amos 3 7 and above all he is going to reveal those things for them who daily come and learn the word of the Lord under the KT theology of daily gap and who has to reveal to you the right things? It is Christ our Lord our God in whom the things have been concealed and kept. How do you know Christ? How do you learn Christ? How do you grow up in Christ? 
If you grieve constantly, squelch and lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and not searching the deep things, and not making to search the deep things by Lord God, the Holy Spirit for you. The Arauna process of 1 Corinthians 2.14. In fact, even the minute detail of it, at every breath of you. And that's what we read in the Messianic Psalm of Psalms 22. I have been poured out like a water, O Lord. My joints have gone, have, have gone weak. There is no strength in me. Till that time, if you have not been absolutely searching yourself diligently, the strength of this human viewpoint, if it is not been removed, says Apostle Paul, even in 2 Corinthians 39, when we are weak, then you are strong. How are we could be weak? Weak in the human view reasonings, weak in the human view points of rationalism and empiricism and logics of this world, and being strong in the faith of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that your catechrisan could be trained very well. If you don't search diligently yourself, you're going to become a great failure, dear brother. Half-truths are no truths. With Christ our Lord our God, it's only the truth. He requires the truth putting upon the new man. And Even when we look upon the millennium when we read, it says Isaiah chapter 65, the pots will be filled with the righteousness of the Lord our God and they shall be cooked the righteousness of Christ. Far less when I have been being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the great Trinity God indwells in us. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being the Shekinah glory, God the Father made perfect for us in John 14, 23 and 17, 23. Then only we shall be mature, then only we shall be perfect. Then what the word says for us, grieving, squelching and lying, is that your life? Is that your pattern of example that you live to this world? There is no compromise with our Lord of God, dear brethren. Dealing with the dead things is not the affair of this earth. Every believer has been placed to deal with the heavenly things of Christ. People come to cherish and nourish in the things of this earth, thinking that they have a pilgrimage trip to enjoy. But in grace and in Christ, if you don't witness the truth of the Lord our God, you take it granted, you are walking in the death beat of the march where Satan leads you to inculcate not the truth, but it inculcates the human viewpoint reasoning, the fitan logia. And where the world ends? The world ends in destruction, dever. But Christian believer is not been called to be in dever. Though he's been originating the same word from Dawar, he's been called to utter the word of the Lord of God. Therefore, we have been represented to be the light and salt principle on this earth. Every breath that we take should be Dawar, not Dever. If you grieve and squelch and lie and not come up to learn the word of the Lord of God every day, and if you're a pastor teacher or if it doesn't exegete the word of the Lord of God every day in proper isagogical, categorical explanation of the truth, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, then take it granted you are moving from Davar to Dever. Only one alphabet in the both words, DHA, if you represent it by DHE, and VAR to be represented by VER, you're lost. That's the destruction by the Lord of our God upon you, punishment for you by that. That's what many people are doing today in the Christendom. By not honoring Lord's word above his name, they are made from Davar to Dever. They are made from Aven to Amen, which I have read already in one of our previous tapes. Because of the roguish mind. Because of not being marrying to a virgin woman in Christ. Marrying to a prostitute. We need to guard the truth, dear brethren, Shamar. By being alert, Shakat. By being alert, Shadak, not Shakat. Only when we hear, hear with the ears of our mind to understand our life on this earth so that it cannot have any spot of blame even in the terms of spirit, soul and body as well. Far less we can think we can marry a one who is not a virgin. And yet they represent themselves to tell they have been true, they have been correct. 
Do you not know the marriage bed of the Lord our God should not be defiled, says Hebrews 13, 14, 13, 4. And yet what do they do? They get defiled. They get defiled in one point of the marriage. They get defiled when they enter into the pulpit. They get defiled whenever they take the word of the Lord, not from the original language of the scriptures. And that they tell they are the great orators of Vithanologia. And why they're not able to look the concealed wisdom of the Lord our God? Do you know, dear brethren? They don't desire for truth. They don't make themselves their lives to be holy in the presence of the Lord our God by walking in truth. Nominal Christian, conventional Christians are great for them to understand. But as it comes to the word of the Lord our God, they are not able to realize what truth it is requiring and demanding for us. Because they think they're dealing with the affairs of their own family, dear brethren. And that includes the Christendom heads starting from Roman Catholicism. That includes at the present Christendom, though we have the reformation movement of 500 years, the infallible and inerrant word of the Lord of our God, and in the enlightenment period of the science and technology, we are able to look back the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic in our smartphones. Yet they don't desire for the truth. Life will perish if they don't desire for the truth. Their life has no meaning if they don't desire for the truth. That's what we read in Colossians 2.4. In whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Be careful, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. The word beguile, paralogizomai, to misrepresent, to misrecon, to miscalculate. You are true spiritual life in Christ. Your meaningful purpose of faulting or privileges in Christ. And represent them by the following of the so-called believers more than us who were earlier to quote them rather than telling the truth in Christ. The way what we have are much of examples in the word of the Lord of our God rather than quoting commentaries. Since they don't go through proper exegesis, proper exegesis process, they certainly take time to quote. And fill that with the commentaries in their discourse. What a shame it is. I don't deny the commentators are not needed. But the real transformation of your thinking, the renovation of the standards of your life, of your thinking, with the right infallible and inerrant word of virgin word, to be called more specifically virgin word of Lord God, in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, if you don't represent the truth and virgin work of the Lord of our God day by day, for which you have been kept alive on this earth if you are a pastor teacher. Because the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, the love of Christ our Lord of our God constrains us. The love of Christ our Lord of our God makes us not only just to have to guard the faith, but to fight for the faith in the world. How can we let go my Lord's name to be defiling on this earth? You need to present the right thing, not the corrupted thing of your mind. Because the name of my Lord, my rock, my God, my salvation among the nations, among the Gentiles is dreadful. He is terrible. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And we have been represented with this great gift of the pastor teacher to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God. And yet the believers walk. Not holding the light and salt principle of Christ. What a shame it is. The nagi duty which you have to do from the utterance of your life from Davar and not to become Devar by producing Avan, A W E N, and call it as Amen. Avan is nothing but vanity, which is nothing but nothingness. Amen is what for truth, so it is, so it will be. They have changed it from Avan to Amen. They have changed it from Davar to Dever. And yet they tell their workers of the law. They have changed exegiomai to Fithanlogia because of the matalogia of the darkness of their soul. To realize what is the right purpose in Christ.
entering into the pulpits as our Lord our God says Lord Lord you shall call me but I will say I do not know who you are because you are workers of iniquity you do not work the will of God the Father in heaven what is the will of God the Father in heaven do you know at least that you have been made to be a king and you have been called to be learning the right word of the Lord our God with proper exegeomai because the wisdom and the, and the treasures of the Lord our God are been hidden in Christ and if you don't come there to prove your faithfulness to the Lord our God day by day as Abraham was being proved whether he is a faithful friend to the Lord our God or not. Moses was being told he is a faithful among all of my home. David was being told a man after God's own heart. Daniel was being told his innocence was being found in my presence. What a privilege it is. Noah was being told in spite of 120 years though the man's heart was continually evil. The same things today we can look in our churches. The mind of this man is continually evil. It's not fit for anything else. Yet Noah continued his work 120 years of preaching, the preaching of righteousness. How many converts were there? Only his family members. So what? Today also it may be the same terms in our mind, in our teaching. Only few people may come. So what? We shall stand for the truth. How many days more when we read Lamentations 1.10 as well it says How many days more you want to be there in the point to tell that you exchange the pleasant things for your bread The coveted things for your bread The very desirable and glorious things for just for pieces of bread And you want to become vile That's what we look when the pastors will become just for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley and they call the name of the Lord our God in vain and they teach the things pertaining to vain. What a shame it is. Their entire lives have been designed for just make their belly as God. And who has designed it? Is it the Lord's work? No. The circumstances and the things pertaining to their mind not to know the real fear of the Lord of a God where with Lord of a God said no one can stand in my presence. No one can approach him. But yet in grace upon grace he came towards us. Because he remembers us that we are dust. And yet every day he comes, though we grieve and squelch and lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, at every breath of our life without using rebound, he comes with the grace option for you to give once again because of his hupomene, his patience. He is absolutely abiding faithful for us, says 2 Timothy 2 verses 11 through 13. We may deny him, but he will not deny us. He abides faithful for us. But what the congregation does today, every breath, grievance, squelch and lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of light, get the Holy Spirit. Every breath that think, if it is not by the miracles, healings or tongues and speak in tongues, then only they are not being dwelled by light, get the Holy Spirit. That's what they think. But that's not the real criteria. But the word of the Lord of God, the real miracle and the real healing is that where till date our Lord of God is performing, transforming the saints from the sinners to saints and transforming the saints who have been there towards the glory of the Lord of God to move from saints to usobians and from usobians to become the greatest doulos of the Lord of God and from doulos to become the prisoners for Christ by imitating Christ as behaving which is perfect for them in choosing of Christ. He's doing that miracle every day. Sinners have been saved by believing in Christ. And the believing saints have been becoming the transfiguration. That's what we can call uh, the transformation of metamorphomai. But how many of them they are becoming the metamorphomai in Christ? To daily grow up in the knowledge of the word of the Lord of our God. To daily teach the mind of Christ every day. How many of them they have changed the facets of their soul from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint. And understand they have been kings. And we read the principle of Nagid, even in the point of Deuteronomy 17, 18, to tell the one who has to be a king in you should write a copy of the law which has been there in the Levites. And today we have the copy of the law of the book, what it is from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21, because you have to get acquainted your mind to throw out the human viewpoint and deposit the divine viewpoint in Christ. What the word of the Lord of God teaches, what the mind of Christ of the Lord of God explains for us, that's what you have to take, that's what you have to teach, that's what you have to tell. By your holy manner walk of life, dear brethren. Not what others recognize tomorrow when you come in your colorful dresses. When you come in your terms of great ornaments to tell Christ our Lord our God is born. Yes, indeed, Christ the Lord our God has been born. It's a great joy. Without him, we don't have anything on this earth. 
but has he born in you? Has he taken the birth in you? And many people don't realize nominal Christians, conventional Christians. In fact, even indeed, the terms from Claptes, Lestes, Misthotes, Thupas, Canapes, Thiflos, and Shuras oriented minded pastors who don't learn if it is not Nagate to Davar, they end up in their lives in Dever. Punishment by the Lord of a God for their death. And that's what the people are looking today in the pulpits. How true we need to be to his word. How true we need to be to get married to a virgin. And by that I mean the original languages of the scriptures. How many days more yet to want to have your marriage with prostitutes. The wars. And so to the wind and reap war wind. How many days more, dear brethren, you require such life? Even I point to the points of believers as well. How many days more you want to grieve, you want to squelch, you want to lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? How many days more you want to end up your life in such waning of your thoughts? We have been made to put on the new man. The new man in the terms of Endikai, Sunekai, Hosiatis, Thessalatia. The new man where we have been told we need to walk in the paths of righteousness and justice in Christ. A new man where the word of the Lord of our God is so essential for us. Without him we cannot even breathe. We cannot even think of our existence on this earth. And whom do you think you are dealing with? Elisha was been told to look the transformation in the whirlwind of Elijah, then he will be given the mantle upon his shoulders. Do you think those are comic stories? The chariots of fire, the holiness of the Lord, protecting them day and night to tell, Lord, rise up, leaders, Lord, settle down to the myriads of Israel's. What do you think of that lad God, the Holy Spirit? Do you think it's just an entity? And you can represent that in the debates to some moron and tell this is a spirit of truth? <laughs> because of your failure to inculcate in the mind of Christ to the people who come for you. The debates have been gone to those men who are absolutely, though being not born in the Spirit, what dichotomy having only soul and mind or soul and flesh they quote the scriptures intellectually and you not able to realize the exegeomai process and end up in fifth homologia where do you tell and what do you tell and you lose your debates to represent my lord's glorious name the same thing continuing today that they want to prove that Jesus Christ our Lord is not God. If it were not so, then the entire array of angels saluting my Lord's presence to tell he was been born and he's been named as Christ the Lord. When the shepherds looked unto it, what it was. It was not just a sudden appearance of the angel, the entire host of angelic host were marching and saluting my Lord's birth. And that time the proclamation was been given before the day of the Hanukkah, which could be started out on December 25th. And the people who tell we should not celebrate such and such, we shall not do such and such, who cares? Hanukkah is what we look. My Lord's birth has been revealed and we look upon that. And the people who want to say that Jesus Christ is not the Lord of a God, like Didat, like Nayaks of Zakir Real or any other moron who could rise as well. But my Lord's name is terrible. It's dreadful among the nations. The mentoring indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit will make every word of you to be like a king. The decree of the word of the Lord of our God when you open the palate of your mouth in the Amat character of Christ. Because for your lips it's an abomination which is called as wickedness, that which has been twisted, that which has been not properly told. 
and we don't want to open our lips in our human energy all the time to make and to twist the word of the Lord our God as our we need. Our palate will speak the truth and our mouth will speak in righteousness. That's what we have been designed in Christ. Only when we daily gap, only when we daily fulfill the principle of the loyalty of friendship wherewith our Lord our God has chosen us to be for his loyalty and he tests every day, though it's rain or shining, though it is coming every day and he represents the truth or not. Because the secrets will belong to his prophets, says Amos 3, 7. And in the New Testament, every believer is a prophet. He has to know the concealed doctrine of the mind of Christ of this mystery realm of the church age and he has to represent his life in the walk of that light. And for that every believer, every believer is a New Testament prophet, dear brethren. Not any morons who can come and tell that we have the prophecy to tell such and such things for you. No, the New Testament, the completed canon scripture makes every believer to be a prophet. And every believer is a commissioned one to be as an apostle to the law. A commission one to carry his burden. A commission one to take his cross. A commission one to be his great disciple. Not just thinking you can have all the ten gifts. The ten gifts being reduced to seven in the Romans. And when we come to Ephesians, it has been reduced to four. Apostles and prophets, they have done their work and we have only two now. Evangelical realm and the duty of the right bona fide gifted pastor teachers or teaching shepherds. If the pastor teacher is not a teaching shepherd, again, millions of people will rise with millions of cults in their thoughts. And what it is? Faithan logia. The failure to do the work of the Lord our God, which has been given to them faithfully. The failure to tell, like the Lord our God our said, says for us in the Luke chapter 17, the parable, hey, we are unprofitable slaves, O Lord our God, that which is our duty to be done, we are doing it. We don't require any honor for it. We don't require any recognition for it. We don't require any name and fame and money for it. We require only thy name to be honored. We require only thy word to be famed. And we require thy word to be dreadful among these nations of unbelieving, perishing crowd in the terms of the power's crooked minds, not knowing the shining of the light of the Lord of our God and come dare enough to expose their deeds because the deeds being evil, they don't want to look upon the light, including the believers. They will certainly perish by not holding the truth, far less they can think they can debate in this truth. Therefore, for believers, the greatest warning when we look in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, how great our Lord of our God has spent for us in this mystery epistles to realize the true calling in Christ. Such great epistles which have been our life and which have to be our life at every breath to realize that it is not Apostle Paul who has fulfilled the remaining part and they tell Christianity has been built upon Apostle Paul by the so-called debaters and morons. We don't look upon those terms. We look upon the terms of the divine revolution where our Lord our God has given for us so that though the people think in those terms, let them perish in their terms. But we are not worried about that. We are worried only about one thing. We have the completed canon of scripture for which we need to be thankful to the Lord our God, the first grace, the second grace for us. We have the salvation in Christ. That's enough for us. And we have our heaven life recorded and kept for us in the heaven where Christ our Lord our God says in John 14 3 many mansions and they will come back and take us that's enough for us and the revelation which is given for us it's enough for us to preach and to teach and to live a life of this truth for this earth by witnessing to be nuggets by witnessing to be kings King Solomon King David told about Solomon and told he will be king over Israel and Judah Likewise, today we are being named by the great King of the Lord of our God, the Royal King of Christ, who said in John 18, 37 and 38, Yes, as you say, I am a king, I have been born to witness the truth. So we shall be today given for us in Revelation 1, 6 and, 1, 6 and 7 to tell the Basilea and the, the things pertaining to the priesthood. He goes along to prove, yes, you are being made to be kings. And what is that king? As King David made his son to be Solomon to be king, we shall not end up like Solomon, but we shall be like David as a rule which has been laid for us, that we shall be a man after God's own heart. We do sin either by thought, word, or deed, but yet our Lord of God has made provision for us. Whenever we use rebound, we can get back into the fellowship of truth. And how much more it should be for the pastor teachers at every breath to be to take every word, scrutinize it and exegete it and, and isolate it and understand the word of it and meditate upon it. And as Lord God, the Holy Spirit opens your mouth to preach in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit teach that to the congregation. 
How great it would be when the pastor teachers will follow this principle. How true it would be when every believer will become the principle of light and salt on this earth. How accurate it would be when they walk the holy manner of life on this earth. But the world is happy with the congregation of the Lord. Do you know why the world is happy? Because in today's Christendom, morals have been replaced by virtues. The king's decree has been replaced by the unrighteous steward who compromises. As we read in Luke 16, the parable of unrighteous steward. Since he has compromised with the mandates of the word of the Lord of our God, with the commandments of the only wise one in Christ, he will end up to become a slave to this world. But every believer has been called to be as a roaring lion in Christ, a roaring reigning king in Christ. The greater you spend your life on this earth by not realizing these things, the greater your life has been absolutely put into the terms of spiritual leprosy, destroying your life on this earth at the same time of the cost being paid in escrow blessings, the eternal life also being destroyed by not having your riches to gain. You will not lose your eternal life, but the rewards, but the riches that you need to adorn in the presence of the Lord of our God with His garments in white of righteousness, you shall lose that. No decoration for you. That's what you shall lose your rewards. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 16. No rewards. But you have the foundation of the Lord of our God upon you. You yourself will be saved. But the life that you thought will be burnt off when you're not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you're in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is not gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and talking along in tongues so that those Pentecostal crowd heads who can realize the fulfillment of Jeremiah 8 to in their lives, their wives being allopped, at least they should stop teaching to them to tell we are not speaking in tongues. Tongues is not now. Tongues has been since long back in AD 70. And by that we refer to the first AD 70 of the first century, 0070, after the birth and resurrection and ascension of Christ our Lord our God after his crucifixion. And the gift of tongues from AD 30 to AD 70, those 40 years of evangelism to the Jews in unknown languages was them to tell, you will be taken out, the destruction of the temple. Be careful and believe in Christ and be saved. Prior to that in AD 68, Apostle Paul was being beheaded. And that's the real work where every believer have to wake up, the gift of tongues being seized, the temporal spiritual gifts being seized. When we read in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, from 10 gifts it came to the point of understanding to 7 in Romans 12. And when we understand in the Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians, the great mystery epistles of Christ, it has come back to 4. The copulative conjunction Chi and the Grand Village Sharp Rule which teaches. It is not pastor and teacher, two different things. It is only one pastor teacher or teaching pastor or teaching shepherd. If there is no teaching pastor for you every day, then you think he is not a pastor for you. He has come to take your eternal wealth of glory, not the physical wealth on this earth. He has come to be like a devouring wolf. If he's not a teaching shepherd, if he doesn't take to you word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, then take it granted he's not a shepherd for you at all. And if he goes along with the committee to tell, yes, we shall go weekly once, he is a fithan logia for you. His appearance and teaching may be good, but it's deceptive. Oratory may be good, but it's deceptive. If it is not been found in the original languages of the scriptures, no oratory is good, because of a lot of a God calls it. You are doing it in the energy of your flesh to quote such and such, to quote such and such. But in the fellowship of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, He brings to your mind what you have learned. He brings to your mind the scriptures, what you have learned. Not taking a book, not writing the notes, except the words wherewith we have not been acquainted with Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, because our mother tongue is not so. And taking the notes of them and being scrutinized to understand and meditate upon those things and come and teach with a great zeal towards the Lord of our God. Even he's going to train you up in those times. 
Even for that we don't require the Lord. Because it is what we speak about Christ. It is what we teach about Christ. We don't require the things pertaining to open your Bible to such and such and we shall speak such and such things. But premeditated, prejudiced. Lord our God knows to what congregation, what message we have to give. But it has to be every day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Not weekly ones, monthly ones. Every day, every day, every day. He knows how to expound the word. But we should be a ready vessel for it. A ready vessel in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being constantly prepared for it. And he teaches to us what is our life in that world. Because tomorrow when we go back, he receives us after the counsel that is given for us on this earth. We should not be ashamed. And how many of the people will get ashamed? Lord knows. But our life is to not get ashamed. Therefore we read in Ephesians chapter 5. Be you becoming then the imitators of the Lord of a God. As the children, beloved, the word again, techna. The way how you graduate your technical knowledge, the word techna, day by day. There is no fault in the word of the Lord of God in the original languages of the scriptures. The fault lies in the mind of men. Your modesty should answer that you are not teaching the truth. Because clowns have entered into the pulpits now. Infidels have taken the place of the greatest work of the pastor teacher. To become the dower, and they have represented it to be with Devar. And where we need to walk, walk in love according to the Christos, the way how he loved and gave himself for the sake of offering and sacrifice to the Lord of a God as a sweet smelling fragrance. Not just growing up to be techna, living as a life as a living sacrifice, as Romans 12:2. He goes further to teach for us the way how Christ our Lord our God's offering was great. He gave himself for Christ as great one. So that we can understand what exactly the word tells in Philippians chapter 3 that I should know the power of his resurrection. Because I desire for the superior knowledge in the Lord of our God and that power of the spiritual resurrection in every believer in Christ before he could get the physical resurrection as well in the terms of metaschematizoa Philippians 3 19 and 20. He should walk in the path of the Lord of our God to teach. That is nothing to be ashamed. And look forward ahead every day as long as our Lord of our God seems fit. I have not attained, O Lord. Your righteousness, your perfection. What you desire in us. You are a potter and we are the clay. What you desire in us, we have not attained it, O Lord. Therefore, he breaks us day by day what he wants. Therefore, he certainly designs what is his glory so that we could be for his glory as a one who could be the temple in, in the pillar in the temple of the Lord of our God, says Revelation 2. The one who overcomes. Every day, if we don't go along to preach the things pertaining to the words of Psalms chapter 22, wherewith he prays to the Lord of our God to teach us. The great pain of his agony. If we don't break up ourselves to be poured out like water, that our bones are been out of joint and our heart is like wax and it has been melted in the midst of my bowels so that our strength is dried up like a pot shed and my tongue cleaveth to my joys and then thou hast brought me into the dust of death. And do you know when that widow also comes to tell to Elijah? You have come to expose my sins by looking upon the, the death of my son. If we don't look upon our sins being exposed in the terms of this, we shall look upon and taste upon the taste of the death. But Christ our Lord our God has given not to look upon the things pertaining to that realm of sinning day by day, but calls upon to examine yourself breaking day by day in the fellowship of the Lord our God and understand what is that in Christ, that our heart is gone wax. And to wake up, wake up, wake up from your physical activities, what we have read just now. And to put along the new man, the spiritual man. Your tongue will cleave onto the jaw. 
if you certainly don't wake up to realize that we cannot open our palate of the mouth without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because so that we can fulfill the Rima declaration of Davar to this world, unbelieving and perishing powers and crooked generations. How long you want to have your tongue cleaved onto your jaw? In the energy of the flesh. Search it diligently. Know, know your heart. Know your anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive of character in you. And get humbled yourself. As Psalms 22 verses 11 and 12 teaches for us. As Christ our Lord of our God in his messianic psalm tells. His great distress. If every believer will go through such suffering in the energy of the flesh to realize it is no longer the flesh, it is the spirit. And without the spirit of the Lord of our God, we cannot call him as Lord. And without being the witness of the spirit to tell that we are his children and to walk according to his truth, then your life is waste. If you don't certainly dig it every day, every breath, every walk of your life. As a sweet smelling savour to the Lord of our God, our lives have to be led. But how the people they are, conjunction of contrast, fornication, all mannerism of uncleanliness, all mannerism of greed. And that one should not be named even among us, says the word of the Lord of God, because we are now the heavenly citizens of Christ. And not only that, even the filthiness, the foolish talking. Mora logia, without having proper exegema, it's mora logia. Nor the things pertaining to the words of jesting, or insinuendo, or well reverting, which are not convenient for our tongue to speak about them. And this you should know, that no war monger, nor unclean person, nor the one who is a covetous one, who is an idolater, will have any inheritance in the kingdom of the Lord of God. The enjoyment of the allotment for which he has been chosen in Christ. We have been called to give as a living sacrifice to the Lord of our God, but fornication, uncleanliness, covetousness, that shall not even be named among you. Neither the things pertaining to the things of morologia, or the things pertaining to eutropelia, or the things pertaining to anaconda, but rather that which is being proper to the Lord of our God should be given by our lives. So that you should know that no warmonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater will have any inheritance in the kingdom of the Lord of our God. But the people will come to tell, why can't it be? We don't have time to learn the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Therefore, we preach how it could be called as moral agia. Therefore, the word says, do not be seducing. Do not get cheated. Do not get deluded yourself. Do not get deceived yourself. Because it's an empty word. It's a vain and useless thing. And because of this, the desire to punish to whom our Lord our God seems fit in the manner he has to do it. The offspring of such parents who have been produced to corrupt their minds by Satan and including many pastor teachers who walk in the paths of Satan being called as the children of disobedience the great wrath of the Lord of our God the desire with grief will come and that's what you and I should wake up the desire upon them who are apetheias, un, uh, unpersuadableness or stubborn, which would be called as unbelief, which opposes that which is to the gracious word and purpose of the Lord of a God, the children of disobedience. You may be stubborn enough not to listen to this tape, I don't mind, you are answerable to the Lord. Our duty is to do that which is right in the sight of Christ our Lord of a God. What the people think, what the people follow, whether the people listen, whether the people subscribe, whether the people will love to look the entire tape of it, we don't mind. The grace has been given for them. As Christ our Lord our God says, the secret things belongs to the Lord our God. Being concealed in Christ, being hidden in Christ, they have to dig for it. And if they don't listen to this, let it be for them. 
But Lord's hand is pure to tell, I have signed the grace before judgment. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue in the same divine illumination of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, tomorrow. Bible doctrine is not a debate. Bible doctrine is the way of life and without that way of life we don't have anything else on this earth. It's our life. It's not a vain thing. Don't waste your time looking upon your debates. Look and understand what is exegiomai rather than fithan logia which has been taught in your pulpits. What it is moral logia, foolish talking in your pulpits. And seek and search the truth in Christ. Let no man deceive you, cheat you, by misreckoning the miscalculation of the right calling in Christ. And let no man cheat you. But be careful. The indignation of the Lord of a God, his desire with grief, will come upon them who grieve and squelch and lie every breath of their life by not being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The great desire of grief which comes upon them. And in order to understand that, when you go back and look the use of this word very specifically, the punish to one who seems who have been done in that manner so that he has to be punished. Though you have been there in the Lord of a God, the punishment which you get, desire with grief upon those stubborn minded men who don't realize the truth. So think over these issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my God, my salvation. That is about its official and this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall not talk to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to Keru Sothan Lagan, herald the word in season or out of season, because the diamond my witnesses where they have been called. The number one diamond my witnesses in Wellington Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry besides nature, the entire world goes to be witnesses. But what is our work? To rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide. It's your life. Forget Pithan Lagia, realize Exigiomai, look upon your nagged duty, consider your dour words to this world rather than becoming devour from Lord. The same thing of Ephesians 5 6. Upon the children of disobedience, the wrath of the Lord of a God is devour. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, what a great privilege it is to have fellowship through the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten in this message and give a great strength of courage to them who certainly walk in the truth every day teaching their word. And for them who are Lord, who are constantly grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Father, let them wake up because of the indignation what has been reserved and kept for them so that they can make this life a meaningful one, a purposeful one of a heavenly calling in the Lord as we are called to be imitators of the Lord of our God in Christ. We ask these things. Your word is enough, O Lord, to receive these things, because we believe by faith. In Christ's matchless, pure, Lord's gracious name, we pray for our Lord. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and let us in these things. Amen. <laughs>